Welcome back, everybody, to the 6.5 Summit, where we are talking about unleashing AI. You're watching the semiconductor track, uh, where we explore the core technologies for the AI era. And you know, on the 6.5, we love semiconductors. I think we probably talk 30% just about semiconductors. They are so important, whether it's memory, packaging, foundry innovation, and everything in between. We're opening up with a global leader in this space, Samsung Semiconductor. And as AI workloads scale very quickly, memory has become one of the biggest bottlenecks, not necessarily the GPUs, but if you don't have the right type of memory or enough memory, your GPUs or your accelerators are not going to work as well as, as you want. And I'm joined by Paul Cho, president of Samsung Semiconductor. We're going to discuss how the future of AI is shipped by innovation in memory, packaging, and systems architecture. We know the 6.5 audience loves Semiconductor. So I think you're going to enjoy this. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, great, great to see you. Yeah, it's just been, what, what a couple of years here. I mean, it seems like the pace is just torrid. We're moving forward. The industry is creating new innovations. And listen, I always knew semiconductors were amazing. I've been in and around semiconductors for 35 years this June, but it took a while for other people to, to catch up. That's right. Yeah. So it really is a historic moment here. Generative AI and semiconductors, you can, you know, whether it's uh, CapEx, whether it's uh, market valuations, whether it's the buzz in, in the industry uh, on the use cases, let me ask you, what excites you most about the direction the industry is, is heading right now? Yeah, Pat, uh, as you know, um, AI is evolving at an extraordinary pace from generative models in the data center to robots and autonomous systems at the edge. It is moving faster than any technology before it. Think about it. Cars took 62 years to reach 50 million users. Phones took 50 years. Television took 22 years. And ChatGPT did it just under two months. It's incredible to think about what will be the next. So in just a few years, we've seen companies like OpenAI, Google, Meta release powerful models trained on massive data sets, some with hundreds of billions of parameters. Model accuracy has improved dramatically. The MMLU score, which is a key benchmark, has more than tripled in a few years from around 28% to 92%. So these advances are transforming the entire stack from compute to memory to packaging driving a need for faster time to market, lower power and TCO, and highly customized architectures. But what excites me the most is that semiconductors are at the core of this transformation. And Samsung has the right building blocks, memory, foundry, system packaging, and some selective logic design capabilities all under one roof. So we can help customers optimize for performance, efficiency, scale, and time to market, wherever AI leads us to. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, not that I keep doing a history lesson here, but uh, when the dot, dot com era hit, I actually worked at a dot com and I was part of the run up. In fact, I worked for the number one search engine. And, oh. and I also, you know, we saw the dot bomb where it came down. But, you know, uh, the the difference between these two eras is that uh, the green shoots of benefits and whether that's with consumers and, and what they're they're experiencing. By the way, uh, part and parcel to Samsung phones as well. Uh, you are the first to widely adopt AI in your phones, mm -hmm. uh, or or whether it's the industrial edge uh, or related to businesses where they're seeing benefit, let's say uh, on the edge uh, with their CRM systems or the ability to do ERP better, it's it's pretty much everywhere and it's pervasive and there's benefits today 
uh, a lot bigger than being able to buy dog food off the internet uh, in, in the year 2000. So yeah, that's what gets me super excited is not that this, you know, there's fads and there's trends, and this is clearly a trend. And, and if I look at the CapEx that's being spent uh, today currently with the hyperscalers, which I believe will move to the enterprise data center, which will then move uh, to the edge. And, and again, it's not a serial process, but I'm just looking at the the, the amount of chips, the amount of compute uh, uh, required. Um, and even industrial edge, you know, five years ago, we were talking about, you know, we called it industry 4.0. And we all said, hey, the edge is going to change overnight. Well, it didn't. Uh, change as much as we 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 would have liked it, it did, but now we have a hundred times performance per watt AI at the edge, and I think things are going to be dramatically uh, different. I actually have a question here. Uh, right, not but, you know, all these uh, events <laughs> changes are so exciting, but will keep you dizzy. <laughs> yes, no, no, absolutely. Uh, good for analysts, by the way, and analyst firms like mine. So. Hey, I want to drill down into memory, okay? Right. You know, typically it was, oh, I have CPU compute and I can put multiple types of memory in and they don't even need to be that loosely coupled. And uh, But now uh, with the uh, efficiency and the performance required, memory is more important uh, than, than, than ever. Can you talk a little bit about the future of memory in a world where we're pushing the limits on performance, power, and even for, form factor? Like, do we, do we reach a point where you're like, hey, Pat, we're done, we're here, we don't need to innovate anymore? <laughs> so we are not done yet. <laughs> this is a great question. Uh, in fact, indeed, you know, memory poses the biggest architectural challenge in AI compute today. As model sizes scale, compute grows exponentially, but memory bandwidth lags behind. So bandwidth improves by tens of percent per generation, uh, while compute jumps by multi multiples. So that gap is widening. And at the system level, AI performance often depends on how efficiently you move huge amounts of data between memory and compute. So the future of memory lies in bringing data closer to compute because the real challenge isn't just bandwidth, it's power. And in the data center, power consumption has gone through the roof. Just to train ChatGPT4, for example, it has 1.8 trillion parameters. It took 148 gigawatt hours of energy. That's like fully charging 2.5 million Tesla Model Ys. So with Samsung, high bandwidth memory or HBM or increasingly custom HBM is the answer. So on package, HBM dramatically reduces the energy cost of data movement. And with custom HBM, we tailor performance and capacity for specific AI workloads. HBM as such is core to our AI memory strategy. We are delivering today and working side by side with our customers to build custom solutions that meet their specific needs for future applications. Yeah, I you know, it's been fascinating watching how HBM started, you know, a long time ago a uh, very high performance memory was GDDR that was attached to graphics cards, and it still mm -hmm. is uh, yep. for that. But we needed something even faster with lower latency, and and you invented uh, HBM. And HBM, in many cases, because I compare the different vendors of GPUs, any of the different ASICs that get connected, uh, many times power and performance is directly related to the capacity and performance of the HBM. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you there's one graphics card that outperforms another. Uh, I guess they're not cards anymore. They're more, you know, big blocks of silicon uh, that because it has more memory, it outperforms uh, on inference. So, uh, and, and as I talk to 
uh, the folks who buy my research uh, that I advise, uh, even on the ASIC side, right, who are, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's TPU or, or any variant of that, um, their strategies are, are all around uh, HBM. So it's been, right. it's been amazing to watch. That's right. So I want to talk about uh, packaging, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, Foundry. Mm -hmm. I mean, the market need uh, for, and I always like to say, really good markets have three competitors in them, uh, right. Foundry and whether it's packaging. Can you talk to me a little bit about, the? let's start off with packaging, the importance of, of packaging. What does it mean to your strategy? And how are you working uh, with customers? I have tracked the multiple Foundry customers that you've had, a lot of mobile folks, a lot of industrial folks. You had Nvidia uh, on on graphics, and it's been it's been fun to fun to watch. Right. So uh, packaging today isn't just about connecting chips to boards anymore. It now defines the system architecture and must handle growing complexity and performance demands. For AI and HPC, the market wants packages combining logic chips and HBM, and more of both. So that requires larger package sizes. For example, with Samsung, we have iCubeS that supports up to 3.3 reticle sizes. iCubeE and iCubeR are being explored for even larger configurations. To meet rising performance and power needs, Samsung is developing package architectures that connect high bandwidth streamlets and ensure power integrity. And as for our customers, they need a strategic foundry partner that provides scalability, innovation, and long-term reliability, especially in the face of growing geopolitical concerns that are impacting global supply chains. So Samsung Foundry is focused on addressing these needs through a comprehensive technology portfolio that spans both mature and advanced process nodes, backed by additional system packaging capabilities. So this flexibility allows us to support a wide range of applications from traditional mobile and consumer devices to automotive and emerging AI. We also understand that supply chain stability has become a critical consideration here for businesses today. With FAFs in Korea and Texas, we've developed a globally distributed manufacturing network that puts us closer to where our customers are and helps them minimize risks. So with our US FAF investment in Texas, hitting advanced node milestones and a robust ecosystem of design solution partners, we are building momentum in Foundry. Yeah, I love to hear that Texas, go Texas. Go Texas. Uh, and go Austin. <clears throat> it's funny from my from my home, I can see the uh, Tesla Gigafactory. Uh saw it being built and I can see it uh, in operation every every morning that I I wake up. I I'm I'm a little bit too far away from from your facility here, but uh, I hope to visit it someday once you start uh, cranking out wafers. Isn't it funny, uh, packaging? I mean, 20 years ago when I was at AMD and I was knee deep in products, uh, we probably spent 95% on the wafer and about 5% on the package, you know, of resources. You know, it was kind of let's throw it over the wall uh, here. But, you know, as node shrinks, um, as new technologies have become more difficult uh, and architectures have become more distributed, particularly on the larger SOCs, packaging has become a first party citizen because squeezing out every ounce of performance per watt and cost, getting the right dye done in the right process, right? Everything doesn't need bleeding edge. It just, it just doesn't. Uh, and pulling this together has become a, a strategic uh, advantage. Um, on the geopolitical stuff, I, I deal with the CEOs of, you know, your customers, your potential customers on, on a weekly basis, and it is very much on, 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 their, on their mind. 
And I don't think regardless of whatever tariff, wherever we're going to wind up with tariffs, uh, I think in the, in the end, just it, it, these, these um, chip designers want to have a diversified manufacturing port portfolio. They don't want all their eggs in one basket. They don't want all their chips being done in a, in a specific uh, country and competition is good. Competition, it breeds innovation. Uh, it typically lowers the overall costs. Uh, so it's always a good thing. And we need three strong players uh, in wafers and, and, and in packaging. So that, that's my sermon, Paul. <laughs> I like that. So uh, a surprise. It's a surprise for me to learn that you've not been to our Taylor campus. Not yet. I was at your I was at your grand opening party that was uh, about ten miles away. But uh, I am gonna, you know, get in a car as soon as uh, as soon as I get that right. invitation, and and we'll, we'll meet you down there. Right, Pat. I, I'd love to uh, have you there. Um, you know, uh, I envision the most beautiful, most beautiful semiconductor fab complex and campus in the world right in texas hard to believe so exciting so exciting uh paul is there anything um else you'd like to share uh with our our audience here we're you know our audience is all the way from um enterprise it to investors to tech aficionados uh, about half of our viewers are deep into semiconductors is there anything else you'd like to share no, I think we have a lot in common, but the most important keyword today for everyone <laughs> is AI. And, uh, you know, Samsung Semiconductor, we are trying our best to be part of that, not just a part, but the most pivotal role that we want to bring to the market and the ecosystem. And when it comes to memory, it's the high bandwidth, low power uh, memory architectures that we uh, bring on the table what's the customization capabilities uh, that we also bring together so that uh, our customers can uh, have their own custom solutions that will serve their workloads in the best way possible because performance power reliability manageability all those things you never want to miss any single of them and when it comes to transistors and integration we are focusing immensely on honing our advanced logic process technologies and uh, system packaging capabilities. So you bring all these two things together. What ends up is you get the best product in the best time to market. So that's what uh, we want to uh, have off and offer to our customers. I think it's a great way to close this, Paul. I want to thank you uh, for coming on the 6.5. We'd love to have you on again to just drop these truth bombs uh, here. And, you know, Samsung Semi's been a little bit quiet lately and people want to know, hey, what's going on there? So thank you so yeah, much. Me, but I'll be happy to come back anytime. Excellent. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So, hey, thanks for tuning into this kickoff session for the Semiconductor Track. Uh, Paul did a great job. Hopefully he learned a lot and he disclosed some stuff to me that I wasn't aware of. Maybe I wasn't paying attention the first time, but uh, it was very informative for me. And hopefully you found that as well. Memory is not just a component. HBM is core to everything. Uh, foundry and packaging are, are as important as you know in the 6.5 audience that we've discussed here. So we'll be hearing from uh, other folks across the industry as we can explore the chip system strategies powering the next generation of compute. Check out the full lineup on the website. More insights coming up next.